Your mindset about aim assist types in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone 3 will change forever after watching this video. After testing Black Ops vs default aim assist in the last video, I was wondering what's the difference in close, mid and long range for different controllers and what if we use Bluetooth vs USB. As you know, USB polling rate is different compared to Bluetooth for many controllers. With over 100 tests at max rotation value for the right stick, I noticed I was getting the exact aim assist strength for both default and black ops, with not a single millisecond difference. I wanted to stop making this video at this point because it felt pointless, but then something came to my mind. In the last video we tested the aim assist on a lower speed value. What if that makes a difference? What if a change in my ping caused different behavior for aim assist? So let's test everything. The polling rate of your controller doesn't affect aim assist. At least the difference between 250Hz and 1000Hz in 120fps didn't cause any change in aim assist. Using Bluetooth or USB cable as a communication method also doesn't affect the aim assist. So I kept testing it in different situations once again and I swore if it doesn't make a difference I apologize and I finished the video. Well I apologize. Have a great day. Wait wait, I'm just kidding. There's a difference at lower speeds. Not all of us going to spam max push at the right stick like this, are we? If yes, you won't feel a noticeable difference. If no, then the black ops last longer than default aim assist in close, mid and long range regardless of your controller or connection method. What matters even more is your FPS, frames per second. For this one, I tested it in 120Hz mode versus 60Hz and I noticed on lower FPS, you are most likely to have a bit more aim assist time. This is only tested on PS5 and might be different on Xbox or PC. Did you know if you shoot someone in cut or get shot, your FPS drops? Have close attention to this real-time FPS measurement. I think it's due to graphical effects or maybe some other reasons. If you'd like to see an depth video regarding improving FPS on PS5, let me know in the comments. The next test we made was a higher ping. Until now things were tested either in the shooting range or with a stable 20 to 50 milliseconds ping in the match. What if you have a higher ping? Based on the test I made in 100 milliseconds ping, I noticed even if you have zero packet loss, as higher the ping as worse your aim assist will be. It can cause the deactivation of aim assist if the enemy is moving on the opposite direction. And for some cases you'd lose aim assist and it doesn't work at all. More than that, this packet loss on zero isn't something to be happy about. It only shows a loss if it's above 1%, which is a huge number. But based on multiple tests I made with a network real-time monitoring tool to my dedicated server, even a 0.1% packet loss can affect your aim assist especially on anything higher than 20 milliseconds. Now how to use these tricks against others as a disadvantage while they don't even know it? Move as fast as possible. Some pro gamers are masters in different kinds of movements, and one of the main benefits for them is reducing the possibility of aim assist for players against them. It was one of the reasons some people use a faster movement by reducing the left stick max, which we explained in the last video. Some other gamers on the console prefer to be at max speed all the time. And for that they reduce the left stick max even more or if they have dual sense edge they'd use a curve like digital plus 5. Now there is something even more interesting. We have packet loss for both upload and download data packets. If you have packet loss on upload that can cause problems where some of the real data from your controller is lost. That's where on your screen you shoot the enemy maybe 10 bullets but it won't kill them. Then they shoot 3 bullets and boom, you're dead. Now this information could be misused, meaning some gamers use specific apps such as UDP Unicorn for their connection to cause bullets being less effective on them and ruining the information that's sent or received by the game to make themselves laggy for you. It's possible on both consoles and PC. Have you seen such players before? Let me know in the comments. Some of you ask if there is a difference between aim assist and ranked. Currently, I can't test it in ranked, but it was the same for normal matches, private matches, and warzone. What about the USB cable and the USB port you use on PS5? I tested both the USB-C 10 gigabits per second and USB-A on the front port and both of them gave me the same results. Here's the final recommendation for this part. Using Black Ops aim assist still gives you an advantage over default. The 60 FPS mode on a stable output gives you higher aim assist slowdown on target, but frame drops on 120 FPS mode can weaken the aim assist in some cases. I would suggest 120Hz mode in either way. For the network ask your ISP to activate the game mode service. Most 
internet providers have such service to improve your connection for games. How to weaken aim assist on the enemy side. I was playing some matches recently and I noticed it's harder to keep aiming at people who jump while running in a straight direction horizontally or changing vertical position. So I did put it on a test to see what's the difference between normal movement, run, tact, sprint, tact, sprint and jump on a reverse direction following assist for horizontal direction. For this test, we consider the aim assist from the moment it engages the direction of rotation to the moment it releases from the raw aim direction and we do frame counting from the same location with the same amount of horizontal speed on the right joystick known as X raw on value 100. Doing multiple tests regarding different modes, we got 77 frames on max walking speed, 66 for running, 56 for tactical sprint and 60 for tactical and jumping. Considering the jump and crouch will require more effort for vertical aim adjustment in some cases, it seems to be a good technique. And maybe that's one of the reasons some people are looking for keyboard-like movement on the controller to be at max speed all the time. The difference in this test between all modes is about 175 milliseconds in aim assist which is a noticeable value. I suppose you already knew this, but what about the best settings to activate the aim assist earlier on controllers? First, we need to know the basics of aim assist activation on the right stick, then I show you what's the best in my opinion. Based on the advanced test I made, I noticed on the right stick with 0 dead zone and 99% max value, the aim assist activates on value 121 on the right stick. Anything above 121 to 128 won't activate aim assist. That's the assist dead zone, which is about 6.47%. So based on this test, if you don't have a huge drift that bothers you when aiming, I'd suggest keeping mean value on dead zone 0. You might be wondering what about max? If we lower that, it can activate aim assist permanently. With a lower max, the mean value starts much earlier, such as 80 instead of 99%. But there's a downside, you'll have less space on your right stick which can make aiming harder. It's like when someone uses a mouse with a huge space and lower speed compared to someone who has a small disc and needs to have higher sensitivity because there's less space. In my opinion, it does not worth it. So using 0 to 99, or if you have noticeable drift, a value under 5, something like 1 or 2 for mean could be good. For your understanding, disabling fidelity cast, changing field of view or some other graphical options doesn't prevent the FPS drop when shooting or being shot. I also tested power consumption options multiple times and that only affects menus. So there must be other things to prevent this FPS drop and stabilize it on PS5. Which if you want to see them, let me know in the comments. So I'll test them for future videos. I was also wondering if there is a difference between default and Black Ops distance values. So I tested both of them to see if there is a point where one still works while the other stops working. As far as my test goes, it doesn't make a difference. At least for the 1v1 test I made. Maybe if there are more enemies, things change, but I doubt that. But if you were in a situation where none of these make sense, or you encounter someone who doesn't feel normal in anything they do, you should consider there are cheaters almost in every online game, and we don't know them until they are caught. I also have a new EQ settings I'm recently using that is based on headphones bass boost mix. For some of you who didn't like the last settings, this is my recommended EQ with 3D audio for Pulse Elite to have a balanced audio and boost footsteps in most cases. And this one is for Pulse 3D headset. And this one is for Pulse Explore. But yeah, Explore is a bit tricky. Let me know if you like it. But these are personal preference. Now you may wonder what about HDR versus SDR? What about graphic settings? Do they affect aim assist? Yes, they do. Anything that affects your FPS can affect the aim assist too. There is a video already for some of them which you can check from the end screen to improve the delay and lower the input lag in COD. Also join our Discord server from here and share your thoughts and questions in the chat so we can test them for future videos.